In a world of ours filled with sins and sorrows, diseases and pains, poverty and shame, will you be found lacking in sin? In the book of Matthew chapter 24, the Bible says, In such an hour you think not, the Son of Man cometh. A little moment from now, he that shall come will come. He will not delay. Who we'll spring surprises on that final? Your life is time. You never can tell when you will expire. Will you miss the rapture if he comes today? Is your name written in the book of life? If not, this is your time to repent. Rapture culture. Let us turn to First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. Thereafter we shall consider Daniel chapter 7. At your leisure, the message that I want to preach to you, listen carefully, write down, write down this. The message of this area I want to call now. Daniel chapter 7 from verse 1 to 28. In fact, the whole of Daniel chapter 7, let's put it down so that we quick off the book. Daniel chapter 2, the whole of chapter 2. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation 13. First and second Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 3 and 4 and verse 9. Just write them down. Do me this favor when you get home, try to read these this scriptures. Take your time in a very quiet or solitary place. Read them. Then you add 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. But we're not going to read all of these. We're not going to read them, all of them. It will make a very lengthy reading. But I will make reference to them as we progress in the teaching and message of the day. I will read from Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 to 18. Let's go. Are we there? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Can we turn to Daniel? Chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. We shall only read from verse 23 to 28. But the discourse covers the whole chapter. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. We shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and it shall be diverse from the first, and it shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hands until a time and times and the dividing of time. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven 
shall be given to the people of the saints of, saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. He that is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Praise the Lord. Let's get the last reading, Revelation chapter 13. We shall read and skip some parts. Revelation 13 from verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seed, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon who gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme him and his tabernacle and them that dwelt in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Let us go to verse 11. And at the head of another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. He exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them that which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And they doeth great wonders, so that a naked fire came down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And it deceived them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword, and did live. And, power, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bound, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell. Save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that had understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of the man, and the number is six hundred, three score and six. Praise God. May the Lord give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, we shall take a scratch from those items that we raised, we, 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 we put in the flyers that we distributed to us. One of the items is 
signs of the times and times of the signs. Do you notice that in the flyer? Yes. Signs of the times and times of the signs. Now, what do we mean by that? The time we are talking about is one, the time that we are living up to the very day and hour that the trumpet will sound that will usher in the return of our Lord Jesus Christ to take the believers home. So when we are talking about the signs of the times, we are looking at events that were prophesied by God that will be pre-indicative, that will be pointers, convincing pointers to the soon or imminent return of Jesus. And when you begin to see these signs happen, it will tell you that the very, very moment of the sounding of the trumpet is here. The scripture tells us the day and the hour we don't know, but the season is knowable. So we want to look at some of the signs that would prefigure, that will show ahead of Christ's arrival that his coming is very close. In fact, it, 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 the Bible uses the word is right at the door. And when somebody is right at the door, all you need to do to get the person in is to open the door. And if the person has the ability to open the door, the person will not need to, will not need to wait for you. If the person has the ability and authority to open the door, they will open the door and come in and do whatever they want to do. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're going to take one sign. The place I read, there are so many signs. But we shall be taking one, and that one we shall break it into two. And even the two we are breaking it into, each of them have their own branches. I will make so much effort to avoid the branches and narrow myself to the, the two key issues. Because if we take the branches in the next six hours, and I'll be talking to you, we are not going to exhaust it. Because anytime prophetic matters, they are very, very serious and striking. And so today, we shall be looking at the emerging global empire or global government, whichever word you want to use. You can say the emerging global government or the emerging global empire. That is the sign we want to look at today. But when we say emerging, what do we really mean? We mean becoming apparent. Becoming apparent. Becoming seeable. Becoming observable. Becoming obvious. That is the meaning of emerging. Emerging. Then when we say global, we simply mean worldwide. Something that can stretch to the stretch through the length and breadth of this net. That thing is global. And uh, when we look at the meaning of invention, and we look at the meaning of global, the what we are talking about by that subtitle, which is sign number one we want to look at, is the appearing the, the process of becoming obvious that a global government is about to be installed right before your eyes. And we are going to look at events, interplay of events that are speedily precipitating this global government we are talking about this morning which had been prophesied in the book of Daniel chapter 2, in the book of Daniel chapter 7, in the book of uh, Revelation, 
chapter 13 and a couple of other passages in the scriptures. You see, in the last three decades, you are going to notice a renewed discourse and increasing drive for globalization. Globalization. It started before the last three decades. But the last three decades, you'll find it very prominent in political discourse across the globe. You'll find it very, very prominent in economic discourse across the globe. And this discourse has saturated, the discourse on globalization has such saturated the affairs of men all over the world today. And everything that is being done on earth is working towards ensuring the full manifestation and realization of the components of globalization that is in the heart of the one who owns the original idea, not some people who are driving the process ignorantly. Of course, there are some selected few who know exactly what they are doing. They are working towards manifesting the sinister, the evil, the wicked, the vicious agenda of the Antichrist, who is about to be installed as the global president. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, perhaps, let me try to tell us the meaning of globalization. In the, in the view of El Imbaya, it defines globalization as the increased interconnectedness of people all over the earth. Now, he expanded on that by saying it is the simultaneous. Simultaneous means concurrent, something happening at the same time. It is the simultaneous extension and compression of time and space. Now, what does that mean? By that, it means that the globalization will make somebody that is far back in America reachable as if the person is behind you. That is the compression of time and space. Now, the extension, it makes you reach so many people, so many places at the same time with ease and convenience. So, you see that it is from that definition, another scholar said that globalization is the universalization of particularism and particularization of universalism. But let me, let me explain that. It means issues that should have been local is not discussed in terms of its global perspective and implication. And issues that are global are localized and domesticated where we are. Now, this concept of globalization, the goal is to reduce the world into a global village. I guess that is familiar. Now, when you now have seen that that is the focus of these people that are driving the process of globalization, that the focus is to reduce the world into a global village. It therefore means, as an African man, when you talk about a village, it implies a king. And when you talk about a king, you should have your council of chief or your council of elders. Now, when you just oppose that against the concept of globalization, reducing the world into a global village, it therefore implies that the goal of these persons is to create a global community in which there's going to be a single head. The Bible calls that head the Antichrist, but in their palace, they will call him a single world president. Of course, with a global cabinet and a global parliament. So, the council of chiefs that will find in, the, in, in, in our villages, the variant of it in, on a global scale will be a global cabinet through whom this global leader is going to administer the edge. Let's look at some of the persons 
driving this process as I lay the blocks and lay the foundation of these uh, revelations I am ready to. When some people researched into this drive for a single world government, the point that I'm making now is that there is, there is a move, very strong and determined move, to bring about a single world government governed by a single president with a global cabinet. Did you understand me to this point? Hello, do I still have you? Am I talking over your head? Just, just listen carefully. Now, if you understood me to this point, you discover that as good as their intentions, those who are working towards globalization, those who are working towards having a single world government and a single world president, they have their arguments. What are their arguments? Their arguments are that since issues, problems, challenges that government face in their states, in nation states, are no more localized or limited to their country. It, it is now international in school. There is need for the world to come together under one umbrella called global government so that these issues that are being managed locally will not be managed globally and internationally. For instance, we have issues like global warming, global terrorism, we have global disarmament, global peace and security. Cyber crime is not a local crime, it is a global crime. All these issues, they are putting forth this argument to, to press home their, their, their point that there is need for, for the earth to have a single umbrella government that will manage these global issues and stop localizing them. And as good as this may be, what they don't tell you is the sinister intention, the evil motive behind these people working towards a single global government. The scripture tells us in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. Can we quickly look at that? Let us quickly uh, 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 unravel the mystery, the sinister intention, the woman, the mask, the man behind the masquerade of this issue of single world government. Do we have it on the screen? I said already because I'm not sure 
happen again. If anything can happen now, the trumpet can sound now. And if the trumpet sounds now, it means that person will have been anointed. If the trumpet sounds long later, it means that person will later be anointed. But whichever is the case, may you not be here when you shall be here. Yeah. The inner, it is sure you are following me. and shame. Will you be found lacking in sin? In the book of Matthew chapter 24, the Bible says, in such an hour you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Some folks that you will never a little moment from now, he that shall come will come. He will not delay. Who spring surprises on that final Your life is time. Will you miss the rapture if he comes today? Is your name written in the book of life? If not, this is your time to repent. Rapture Culture